So you just got back from a really fun photo shoot. You take the memory card out of your camera, throw it in your computer, start importing the images. You're going through the images and there's this one image that, you know, it's just, it's a great image, but there's just something a little off and you need to brighten part of the image. So we're gonna to talk today about using an old school technique called dodging, using new technology in Lightroom, right now. Okay, so if you've been around photography for any amount of time, you've probably heard the term dodging and burning. So real quickly, dodging and burning is a technique from the darkroom days when photographs used to be developed on white paper that reacted to light. So you would shine the light through an enlarger and when the light hit the paper, the paper would react depending on the negative that the light was shining through, which is why we had negatives. Dodging and burning was a technique that was developed so that if there was a portion of the photograph that you wanted to be a little brighter, you would take this stick that looked like a little lollipop and you would dodge the light or block the light to keep that part of the paper white. And on the opposite side, you would create a, a paper mask and you would allow the light to hit the paper longer in one particular spot to make that part of the photo darker, and that was called burning. So that was dodging and burning. And what's really cool about that is that Adobe used these old techniques, these old terms into their programming lexicon. And so today in Photoshop, for example, we have the dodge and burn tool, which is actually a little icon that's in the shape of a lollipop. So that's where the icon came from, the little tool that you would use in the dark room to dodge and burn your photographs. I always thought that was pretty cool. So in Lightroom, these types of adjustments are made using the adjustment brush. And that's what we're gonna talk about today, particularly how to dodge or brighten a portion of an image. So let's jump into Lightroom. Okay, so this is an image from a recent photo shoot that I did. It was the first time I did a maternity shoot. It was so much fun. I was a little nervous, but you know, I love taking myself out of my comfort zone and doing new things and this was definitely outside of my comfort zone but uh, i think the pictures turned out great if you want to see the, the the best of the shoot um, head on over to my instagram page i posted some of them there this particular photograph was not the best uh, out of all of them but i wanted to use this photograph to illustrate my point so in this photograph what's really important to me is the story that this photograph is telling and you'll notice that your eye is immediately drawn to the baby clothing. However, her face and her facial expression is part of the story of this photograph, but it's not very bright. And so you don't really notice it unless somebody calls it out. So my goal is to brighten her face so that your attention is drawn to her facial expression so that that can become part of the story of the photograph. And so that's what we're gonna do. Okay, so to do that, we're gonna pull down the adjustment brush and that brings down your adjustment brush settings. All of our settings right now are set to zero. And down here at the bottom, you can change your size with the slider. You can change the feather, which is how hard the edge is of your adjustment. Flow is a lot like paint on your paintbrush. If you wanna have a lot of paint on the canvas, you put a lot of paint on the brush. If you just wanna have a little bit of paint, you put a little bit of paint on the brush. Flow works exactly the same way. In this case, we're gonna leave it at 100, but there are cases where you may wanna bring that flow down so that your effect, the adjustment that you're making, is not very strong. One other point that I wanna make real quick is that in Lightroom, this is what's referred to as a local adjustment. It's always recommended that you make global adjustments such as exposure, sharpening, all those types of adjustments before you make any local adjustments. And by local adjustment, I just mean that we are controlling what part of the photograph is affected by the change as opposed to a global adjustment which affects the entire photograph. So in this example, I'm gonna move the exposure up just so that you can see the effect. And I showed you below where you can change the size of your brush, but if you look over here, 
on the brush, when I take my two fingers and I move them up and down on the trackpad, that's a quick way to change the uh, size of the brush. And you can see an inner circle and an outer circle. The inner circle is where the effect is being applied and the area between the inner circle and the outer circle is the feathering. So by the time you get to the outer circle, there is no effect being applied. So that's important to remember when you're applying this effect. Okay, so I've got my brush relatively small here. And just to show you how this works, I'm going to brush over her face and you'll see how this is affecting her face. Now, when you do this, it leaves a black dot behind and you hover over the black dot and it will show you a red mask so that you can see where the effect is being applied. If, for example, I put the effect too far out, you can see this haloing that's happening here. When you do that, if you hit the option button, it changes your plus sign to a minus sign. So I can go back and I can remove that adjustment from the edges. Now, once you apply the effect, you can always come over here and you can change the settings. So I can set this back to zero and it'll be like nothing happened. Uh, there won't be any um, adjustment on her face. What I like to do instead of using exposure is I like to start with the shadows. So I'm gonna bring the shadows up and you'll see that brings a little bit back to her face. And by doing that, now I can make a much smaller adjustment to the exposure. You can see the difference that that makes. I didn't have to bring it up that much at all to bring her face back to life. Now, you don't wanna to go too much with this. I just wanna make this so that your attention is drawn to her face so that you can see her facial expression along with the dress. Now, if I wanted to, to lead your attention, um, I can come over here and click on the new button. This will create a new adjustment and it copies the last setting. So I'm gonna leave this, actually I'm gonna set this uh, to kind of what I had have on her face just to, I can change it later. And now, so now I'm gonna zoom in here a little bit and I'm gonna adjust this over here to her arm using the square. And what I can do here is I can brighten up her arm so that it's not so dark. Now this is way extreme because remember I've got the exposure turned way up and I can come back over here and subtract this along her, along the edge of her arm. Like so. Okay, and here's my black dot over here. So when I hover over that, it shows you where I have the effect applied. You can see that I, uh, when, you, when you do this, you can see that I have a little bit too much above her arm. And so I'm gonna come back over here and subtract just a little bit of that, just to get some of that shadow back, which is good for definition. Should make my brush smaller, come in over the fingers. Now I'm gonna bring this back to full screen and I want to bring this, this adjustment down just a little bit because it's a little bit too much. So now what I have is the arm is a little bit brighter, the face is much brighter than before and I can show you this by toggling this adjustment off and on. So you can see that it just brings the viewer's attention to her face, which is part of the story of the photograph. And so that's one of the reasons why we do adjustments like this. So I hope you enjoyed that video. If you got some value out of that, be sure to hit the like button. I've got some great announcements coming up and some cool projects that I'm excited to share with you guys. So be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any future content. If you have any comments about this video, something that you'd like to learn or any topic ideas, be sure to drop a comment below. Don't forget to discover, create and share, and I will see you in the next video. Peace.